afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast. I'm your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero Select Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting one versus one on a West Wall between the West Guard here, Burmy, fighting for the Soviet Union, the Stalin, taking on the role here of the 125th Rifle Division versus the East Guard, Isildur, fighting for the Oberkommando West Germany. Deutschland rolling out here with the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking. And we're looking at scavenge, special operations, and breakthrough with triple infantry versus Burmy with urban defense tactics. In a incredibly rare move, we get to see urban defense tactics with grenade and mine bulletins. So this should be shaping up to be a pretty interesting fight already here from the get go. Noting also, by the way, no special rifle command started. It is all conscripts for Burmy. So again, a slight increase in place just you know, going off the beaten track there. Not just penal spamming, and in fact, you're going pretty heavy on the basic infantry, the Frontovics. Foot's going to be there moving up here across the uh, tank trap barriers. There's the move towards the fuel punch, Stone punch, coming the cough punch, wiring off the entrance to the house, covering it. And we got a second foot squad moving south, which that was going to try to extend his uh, front towards the south here, maybe sort of pressure his opponent's fuel point there. Birmingham, meanwhile, just going for a lot of conscripts. Foot's going to be securing the fuel point there, standing watch over it. Alright, if you see any Russians, you just shoot them. Don't ask questions, just aim the rifle, pull the trigger. Don't just pull the trigger. Ludwig lost his foot that way. Idiot. Third foot squad on the way there for Isildur. Up north, munitions point there being secured by the engineers. Point here secured, wire off again to deny cover to the Bolshevik foe. Continued press in the southern half there. Conscript Steel Pass both advancing in the center there. Third Fox Squad arriving there for Isildur and the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking. A division that was, well, initially formed around Scandinavian volunteers from, well, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. Later, the Finns would retract their own, sort of pull them up towards their own army. That leave it only Danes and the Norwegians. And then most of those volunteers would later on be moved over towards the 11th SS Panzer Canada Division, Nordland. Though there will be a sort of smaller contingent still of Danes and Norwegians remaining within the division. But it would then primarily be Germanic. Front Gunners is being attacked here by Comfort for the south, but there you go. Attack across open ground with little cover there. Makes it very easy to force to get off several hits. They've got more conscripts going to deal with them, pulling away from the Sturm Pioneers, but at the same time, they lost the Sturm Pioneers and then pursue the conscripts, getting free hits on their back. Of course, he's hoping he can gain the local advantage here and then turn around the Sturm Pioneers. That way, gaining local superiority. That way, the promise by this point, it's already going a bit sour there for Burmian. His conscripts being utterly gutted. Here in the center, folks are finding out this is conscripts up north, folks are engineers. With the more folks goes away there for Isildur and the 5th SS. The Viking. Fighting here and there. Sturm Pioneers heading towards the southern field there. Western field, depending on how you want to look at it. Back here, folks is making way back to reinforce. We got no sign of take yet there. I mean, he could easily go for bad group headquarters, which certainly would be the more likely one considering all the infantry. Though, of course, he could also easily push for mechanized regiment, which is just as likely. And then, of course, a fast looks. We got engineers pushing up for the calf point. And remember, he's got urban defense with forward headquarters. So, if you can get into that house, but you don't need to have to secure the territory, you can pretty much pop that one up. I think you, have, you don't have to. Yeah, there you go. And with this, in one stroke here, Burmy has turned the fight on his head against these guys. are doing well, but now, suddenly his calf point has been turned into a Soviet stronghold. But Burmy can reinforce him, and he's going to be really difficult to remove from because his men get some fat bonuses. So basically, Isla's got a rule two options. Try to deal with this, or try to play around it, by basically pulling through here, and then pushing up, securing the fuel point there. I mean, this one's going to be the more protected one, which is also going to be more with warm attrition. That could be to the benefit of Burmy, as the other one certainly opens up for some other options. It could also deny Burmy resources, more importantly, deny him usage of the house. Then, so later on, we're easily going to maybe deal with it with other options. We'll have to see what happens there, but uh, definitely rare to see an actual fort headquarters going up there from the Soviets. And then being able to pull it off on the cough point. I imagine Eastland did not anticipate this at all because, well, who does? It's such a rarely utilized doctrine in the first place, and Ford Headquarters is even rarer utilized in the doctrine. Right here in Westfall, Berman pulls it off to a shockingly good effect there versus Isildur. But there you go, he is not to be deterred. He wants that point no matter the cost. He's going for the Battle Group Headquarters. 
But again, it's going to be a really difficult fight. No Rudge Stock one can win with, say, a single Fulska this squad. Remember, the conscripts get bonuses being nearby, and they can reinforce nearby. So they're going to be really difficult there for Isidro to push off. Overall, his better option, in my opinion, would be to go for the fuel point and secure the territories around here. That way, connecting it up and trying then to isolate the headquarters and all the resources there. Forcing it, Birmingham then has basically have wasted the resources here. It's going to obviously require more time, and so it's going to have, to have some more risks. But overall, in some ways, it's going to be a much better use of his resources rather than just trying to, you know, take this one down no matter the cost. We'll see what it ends up with. The Birmingham with four conscripts, and obviously, I think to keep in mind with this, I mean, it does delay his take as it is rather expensive in fuel, considerably. It's, you know, 60 fuel. He's calling up line to tank guns in case the opponent has gone for, say, a mechanized record that's going for looks. That way he can counter it there to at least hold it back. Meanwhile, we got medics on the way there for East Lewis going for the battle group headquarters. We'll probably go for like infantry gun then to try and blast this way. Mines down there for Burmy. Very good. Sehr good. Fultz is remaining in here, but obviously it's not going to matter much because the cough point here is probably more important towards here. And overall, I mean, Burmy now is just getting a lot more fuel. So East Lewis, I think, again, needs to just push for the southern fuel point, secure the area around it, and then sort of take it from there <coughs> to ensure Burmy doesn't get too far ahead of him. Constantly pushing up back again behind the full screen, behind the old burned out panzer. Flamethrowing gears moving up there to burn out the fascists. We got assault rifles on the way for some of these to do full screen to deal it. I know we does seem to be aiming for that one. There's Sturm Pani's moving ahead. Fultz pushed off the tank wreck. And he doesn't have a nomination for a Branham Granada. He's actually an easy target out in the open there. There's the conscripts and the engineers. Not good there. Nicht good. Fultz there falling out of the house and the calf point. <coughs> Mikachi is basically moving anything towards the house there. And up north, he got fighting over the fuel point there. So he's going to do it, extending his forces a bit aggressively there. Need to be careful that it doesn't turn sour for him. There we go, cop on there being hit. Light infantry gun all the way for easy to do it. Almost got the southern victory point there. Banhan gun out off, burning some rations. Scorching them. And up here, folks, they're fighting for the fuel pump. They're doing against the engineers, but the engineers themselves were not fully enforced by the looks of it. And that's the easy targets, though. Once you note here, as you can see, the Ford headquarters actually has quite the reinforcement range. Almost got the sun fuel point light infantry gun out. Folks, because it's ready. Sturm Gewehrs in hand to fight for the Fatherland. And there you go, artillery raining down there on the Ford headquarters. It's going to take him some time then to get anywhere with it. Vehicle detection there available for him, but not really. He needs it right now. There's just hardly any vehicles out for the Germans. No panzers that needs to be spotted. Troop ceiling reinforcing. That's going to take some time, obviously, unless he gets a good hit and some of the structure then sort of collapses. Nobody yet went up with. Another hit there. Slow work. We got to take off a Burmese support room company going up then his base. You could of course easily take for the tank with tank commander maybe push out a light tank versus easily do here. More to the fire just raining down. It's gonna take him forever to get that house down. Forever. Push up here. And there you go getting close with the conscripts with the assault rifles, the Stumgewehrs, cutting those rations to ribbons. And the faults are being overwhelmed as well. There's not enough support again to keep you know, leaning forces to this, so, ah, demo charge goes off there, wipes one of these, those folks going to do squads, quite a loss here, because again, he's not getting a lot of resources, and he's already overextending his lines, nice pushing forwards here, against the fort headquarters again with the infantry, out in the open, versus a position, that can support Burmese infantry a lot better, does not feel like the most amazing choice there by Isildur, Fort headquarters continues to remain a thorn there in Isildur's side. A monument to Burmese belief in socialism. A lot of munitions, ammunition there is being expended. Not munitions, but just, you know, more theoretical ammunition versus actual war. It's getting closer, it's getting closer. He's been bombarding it for minutes now. Minutes. There we go. There we go, finally 
took it down there. Finally took him down. It down. Took him quite some time then. Obviously, renders Burmese investment there now dead. But I would say he's gotten plenty of value out of it. Against Isildur. Plenty of value. With Nemo is taken up and can soon go for TC in the light time. You can see there's a Laked Mef up because Isidore is under no illusion that Burmy is not going to somehow go for light vehicles to hit him even harder. So he is, I think, very wisely going for anti tank weapons. So he can stand a chance versus whatever Burmy decides to hit him with, be it a half tank or a T70. And we got mines going down there. Good work by. Burmy. Back by the fuel pond there. Easy was pushing ahead. Even as he's losing access to the southern one though again. That's pretty much cut off and he's just giving up on it by now. We got demo charges there. Burmy just continues to lay them down here versus Easy the cheeky bastard. Easy Lord there pushing force for the fatherland. Could go for break for here to just cut off as many points as quickly as possible. I'm to get back faster. We got the T's in there arriving now for Burmy ever slowly. And the 125th Rifle Division. Sitting out there, oh, he might have moved towards there next to grab the point and like to get too close to the demo charge. Comes to the court by the full skin of ears. The Sturm Gewehrs making short work there of uh, Pushkin. Don't leave me behind! I didn't mean all those things I said about Stalin. Please don't leave me to die. Punch him over there. That could force him into the cover, at which point, boom, demo charge. Hitting points. That makes easy to sort of extending the front and pushing it back against Burmy. And we got here booby traps going off. And they're going to the demo charge. They're wiped. T-70 in the north, question is where is the booby trap going down? That's a bit harder to say. Also, the human body it costs 100 munitions, but on the other hand, it has a very high likelihood of actually wiping an entire infantry squad. It's basically a booby trap, but you don't actually have to pay attention. T-70 there, damaged engine, spare. They are actually moving about this in terms of spare punches quarters close to the front line, maybe cover the fuel point, not a bad idea. Push for the cough point here again by Burmy, his men charging forwards. He's just scrambling to set up a defense against it as he's left his cough point here rather. Oh, extended, no machine guns either for time to stall some of Burmy's infantry there. Could have been a decent idea. There's that booby trap. Fuel victory. Ah, it's the southern munitions point. He has booby trap there. I don't know how much the rations or the ration army was actually into the booby traps, particularly by this stage of the war, since they're more on the offensive. That was a much more German thing. The Germans were really big fans of booby trapping things. Had a lot of nasty tricks for it, including grabbing a mortar bomb and then sneaking under the floorboards of a house and setting that one up. So if someone set off the you know booby trap there, it'd clear out the entire room. And obviously they do so, you know, it wasn't an entry, but, you know, like once they're inside the room, you know, maybe bunch got in and then kaboom, the entire lot dead. Medics up there for Burmy and the 125th Rifle Division. Tietan moving ahead, catching the poor Ludwig out in the open, but like Ken never gets a good hit back there with its 88mm rocket. The South German assault here, Fulsko Stumpas, because he has got minesweepers up, but he's taking and no chances with any more demo charge from Burmy and gets a wipe there, small victory for the German army. A small victory. Truck has fallen back here for the time being for Isildur. And Burmy leads another assault there on the northern fuel point, trying to deny the fascists as much as possible. Isildur making move for the center victory point. Up north here, Fox is counter-attacking, but low in health numbers, they're not going to do much against the veteran country there. Determined to defeat the fascists. And we got another boob tap going off somewhere. Again, the natural question is where? Will it be going down? The enemy has 300, points remaining. 300 points left there for Isildur. Got the T-Sin rolling ahead. Kenner firing at the conscripts, getting away its position. He's might booby trap that point. That's an interesting point. Not exactly a high value point in any way. So it feels a bit strange to booby traps, particularly that one. 
T-7 continues the nasty things there to Isildur's infantry. Also cutting off them as fuel. Isildur would, I think, benefit from an MU-34 to help keep some of that infantry in check, suppress it, murder it. So booby traps are very nasty things. See reinforcement healing going on. And he is in fact now going for the MT-34, the machine and give out. In the meanwhile though, we got the mechanized armor company going out there for Burmy and the Red Army. Getting ready for some bigger tanks, whereas Isildur is uh, far removed from that. Though he has brought up a single second raquette in there for. T7 setting out once more here for Burmy. Another booby trap. He's laying down a lot of booby traps. Not something I've seen quite some time either. Outmaneuvering the Kenrevs there with uh, quite some verve and nerve. Catching these dudes and the tank defenses off guard right. He might have pushed it a bit too far. They caught both of them. And there you go. Panther first off. Ah, the T-70 survives, the T-70 survives, and he's booby at that point as well, again, not on the victory points, not his fuel point either, but mostly his strategic points and a munitions point, that does feel a bit weird there, of course, he might be hoping that, but easily it's not going to be, you know, moving mines moves towards those, and just, you know, move something regular and then get them wiped. Berman though, following up there, the T-34-76, like the support from the Independent Tank Brigade, which is what the Soviets operated with. The rest of the Germans, Panzers were pretty much just organically part of a Panzer Division or later on Panzer, well, Panzer Brigade or a Panzer Grenadier Division late war. The Russians were a bit more fluid in those ways. Of course, they were major armor formation, but they even had smaller tank brigades that could be attached wherever needed to support. Folks are there versus conscripts, most of the guns versus Karnat TKs, and Sturmgewehr 44. Grabbing the point here. Trout not really doing much there for Easel Duo. He's also gone for Spare Cop, so he's likely feeling pressured into going up to go for Command Panther. Which, considering the old situation, is quite understandable. Quite understandable there for Easel Duo Gibson, I think, the best option for them dealing with uh, any armored onslaught that might be from Burmy. In fact, they got the T 34 from 6 out there. Easel Duo is pretty close to the Command Panther, the Befails Panzerwagen. Not PMG Fed 14 with the conscripts being surrounded here by other troops, but nonetheless pushing back the rations. And we even got here radio silence from Isildur. Interesting choice. Very interesting choice. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do good now, but oh well. And we got a fourth booby trap up. In the meanwhile, though, up north here, we got the T 34 here attacking the house with machine gun in it. Again, with the round to push back the T 34. Lance another good hit. And there you go, Command Panther out for Isildur. Going in there, engaging the rations. Shoots off the T-70 missiles though, but crushes a few more cons there beneath its treads. Did you feel a bump, Helmut? Nine, it was probably a Russian. Oh, all right, it's nothing, son. Yeah, nothing. T-70 in a bit of trouble with the Panther. Can't quite easily escape the high speed and for that matter the high accuracy of the panther's gun and there you go t and he goes down bit of a loss here for Burmy. he's still got the t-34 but he does make it easy here for each of those infantry to move freely on the battlefield now they don't have to worry about you getting assaulted by a t and light tank needs to cut up on the road they died where they fought on the road md fed remains inside the house though apparently pushing back ration infantry Stuart here charging force to clear out the 45mm anti-tank gun. Which I think was used quite fine to late war, though would have been used mostly in uh, fortified regions with sort of a specific Soviet defense formation meant to break up German counter-attacks to compose large of support teams and not really much infantry. At which point the 45mm guns were supposed to set up an ambush position that we then fire into the flanks of passing German armor, rather than engaging them head on. Bam in there with the support and company and now go for the Sys 3 field gun so that will engage the Panther a bit more directly. More folks goes there for easy do and the German army. A lot of booby traps in the south. 
is about uh, for them. Looks like something went off here, got uh, dealt with by a minesweeper. How to say that? Finding around here, Banhan Granat. Oh, grenade assault could flash up. The Russians there. Banhan Granat, they're helping out a bit as well there. Getting Dimitri splattered across the ground. Kenneth's are being nearby. I imagine the command panels are in a few repairs. Truck is slightly moving, but overall it hasn't been able to do much with the truck for some time here. Can't because they push back, folks, from yet. Panhand Granada off, denying him cover there. Overall, nice throw there by Isildur. Successfully flashing out the Bolsheviks. With the sister there being carted forward by Burmy. In the south there. Ooh, Booba Trap went off, wiping an entire full squad their squad. And again, it's very good at doing that. I mean, he doesn't always get it, but in many cases, he can pretty much just launch a full white on an infantry squad. So, it's a pretty good ability, to be honest. Shot fired there. T-54-76 back there for Burmy. And the Red Army. T-54, there you go. Ken Murphy's ready. Command Panther also charging in there to defend the fatherland. And there you go. T-54 getting Panther as well. Could risk losing it to the Ken Memphis. Almost got it there. Maxim taking fire, got the Command Panther moving in, shoots and gets the T-34, cooking off the munitions, which wasn't particularly hard, considering uh, the way munition storage was in the T-34, it was pretty much all over the tank, so it was a very flammable tank in that sense. Tank very light, to just go up in flames. Jump out, bringing in again the conscripts, cutting them down now in the open half, they to eventually fleet, Panther going each into serious repairs. Up north, Russia's bringing it, we keep forgetting there's an MG-34 up there defending the northern MiG-2 point, 170 point bow back from Isildur versus Burmy at 452. Lightning they're almost silencing Burmy's MG, another T-34 on the way there for Burmy, Isildur, Panther near repairs, truck could still be doing something, but isn't. And pushing back the anti-tank guns there, forcing them to withdraw from the front line. Well, the Kenmers they're following up, though rather obviously exposed. Making these cheap targets there for Burmese infantry. Panthers gonna need some repairs. Gun oh grenade assault. Not the best throw there by Easildo. Conscripts easily bypassed it, and that was just a waste of nations there by Easildo, to be honest. But at least the focus squad here can save the day. Plus, he shifted his machine gun there rather than remaining static all the time. He's using it to actively support his frontline troops. I think that's a very good move there by Isidore. Very good. Got the comes there being pushed back with machine gun fire and assault after fire. Gaining veterans one there. Contra squad suppressed. Allowing Isidore to advance further against Burmy. And on 25th rifle division, Command Panther sitting out again. Finally fixed up. Pinned by machine gun on the way. And T for the head, trying to clear up the machine gun, but the machine gun is long gone. Hey, Sergei, didn't they say that the machine gun up here? Yes, it's not like they can move on their own, can they? They have legs. Oh, damn those legs. We have those too. Oh. Panther versus T 34. Sisfully setting up support with T 34. Good move there. Continue to press in the south. This case, Stuart Pine is clearing up the booby traps. Very good work there. Panther taking a few hits there. Forced to retreat. More force goes away there for Isidore and the 5th SS up north there. Point being secured by engineers. And they immediately setting about laying down demo charges there. On the northern victory point. Sneaky Burmy. And another unit wiped. Again, another booby trap. Do not underestimate the booby trap. Well, you can do so, but uh, it's very much at your own peril. Another T-34 down there, another T-34 down, and it's any bears down here right on Isidore's center lines. Could have perhaps thrown a bit further in, but still pretty much does the trick and forces Isidore to fall back, conceding the central ground here to Burmy. 
And this time, note, he's taking a slightly longer path. He might have seen Lucy's anticipating his opponent actually lay down a demo charge. And usually, I will expect, you know, if my opponent's laid down, we'll lay down more, in which case I'll begin taking slightly more circ longer rats to try and, you know, hit the pawn or try and you know, avoid more direct ones because those will likely be the ones he's actually demoed. Shot fired here. Field gun enter tank and falling back. And the lightning gun yeah, continues to blast away. Easily has got some on the map, but it's been victory point wise he's rather falling behind and of course the booby traps make it a lot hard for him to just do what he wants because they've cost him quite a bit of infantry by now. So he's gonna have to get in fucked on more stone pounds of the mines, but he's then sort of trying to you know, harass more for the south. He's gonna see if it's one of the Burmy. He's a bit more careful with them. He actually needs to build a larger force because just feeding them to easily one at a time is very much easy to his favour. Stone pounds doing what they can, but they're likely going to get suppressed from here by the Maxim machine gun. And to take them coming the south one, and the field gun coming up in the north there. Interesting thing, he hasn't used his artillery ability yet there. Probably setting up missions for other things though, so. Understandable. Got the T-34 swing six thing out. And Panther sits up, shoots, and gets a good hit there. Enter tank and shooting back. There field gun shooting back. Failing to penetrate the Panther's sloped armor by the looks of it. The Kenneth tank hits the mean got caught in it. Finally got intended bears down here on the um, defenses. Catching the Kenneth and machine gun quite a loss there for Easy door at the same time, truth head enter tank as well, pursuing his Panther, forcing that one to fall back as well. But it does successfully bounce a few shots there. It's 80 millimeters of sloped arm for being quite effective. And it was reasonably effective in the war. It's turret had 100, or mantle there had 100 millimeters armor, though there was a slight shot trap on the earlier models there, causing shots to bounce into the top of the tank's chassis, which was uh, not good. Which was also the issue with the early model King Tiger turret, which was later replaced by a more flat mantlet. Fun fact there. Orbital alone feeds to us behind him, matches up with Shrap Hunter, quarters covering his fuel point there. Say good. Maybe some infrared drum gears. I mean, there's so much cover about them now that the infrared drum gear could be quite good. Damage engine, the Panther, constant losses, 119 points left for Easy Door. There's 447 for Bernie. Bernie's still very much enjoying the lead there again. Easy Door's ability to just wreck his tanks from Bernie just serves them one at a time is certainly helpful for them. Also, both players sort of getting into a bit of a styling grab mentality around the center here, just constantly pushing in. So, I mean, can a stand to extent why for Isidore? I mean, there's all those booby traps, but for Bermi, there's less of an excuse. I mean, while he with the Orbital Darden, which he only got now, nah, has the option for him, and overall he doesn't, and you know, he doesn't have the time to do it either. So, and there's not really much of an excuse for Bermi, just focus directly with head on attacks on the center of the map rather than trying to outmaneuver. He's doing more than he's actually doing. I mean, particularly, say, a good southern flank, you caught, catch him off guard, you know, push up for here, get up there, get behind it that way, hitting you know, some of the easy those vital elements. Close the tank through the center, straight into anti tank guns, pilfer there from easy to the stocks, and conscripts, for the landing good hit, got the panther moving up, also on supporting. No upgrades for them, though. And another boob trap went off here in the south, only killing. All but one of the false grenadiers. Lucky Isildur there, lucky Isildur. And lucky Heinz. The rest though, less lucky. Quite dead actually. 100 points left for Isildur. Getting pretty dicey here. Pretty dicey. As Burmy continues to launch assault after assault, his tanks triumphantly moving across the broken ground. Though Isildur is getting close to the Vetting 2 Command Panther, which is pretty good for him. Burma needs to get out more tanks. And of course, not lose them. There you go. Spots the demo charge here. He could try and break it, but like he's going to not go for that first. He's going to move and deal with the conscripts first. I think that's a sensible decision. Then he can always, you know, from a safer distance. Oh, he tries to do off here. I think uh, Burma, in this case, they're too far away. And we got the jump on this. Then now, Veteran T3, which opens up there for grenades, amongst other things. Pretty good. Actually, getting a steel pine score to Betty Flea is generally pretty good. Due to them veterans being up so slowly. 
Now the T-34 that of Birmingham finally building up his armoured forces to a larger degree here versus Isildur. And we got another incendiary barrage, more or less around the same spot there again, sort of break up the defences. In that regard, Isildur might be being a bit too obvious there, you know, if the machine gun is there, the Raken members tend to be around there as well, so... He might be, you know, making a bit too obvious there for uh, Birmingham to dismantle his defences. There you go, the forces bring through the south and those sort of on those squads, and certainly still not upgrades for the Obsal done. We really should upgrade them. It's not like Obsal are not bad without it though, but they're so much better with an upgrade. That's sort of more the uh, way to look about it. Got the T-54 setting up there for Burmy and the Motherland. Tanks stretching through up north. The T-54 looks like they're setting up for a flank. They're behind some of the those forces, but at the same time got the Panther there. Hanging back, ready to support and deal with any flankers. Grenade off there, almost got the enemy. Anti tank and what? Well, Rakenov again, good hit from the T 34, but taking loss from the T 34. Panther moves head, shoots the T 34. There you go, Rakenov lands a good hit, he could take it out, and there you go. Sets up there to deal with it as he tries to escape. No, he's ramming, he's ramming, and there we go, damaged engine the Panther. Damaged engine. Ach, scheiße, Dieter, so cuts the engine. And we don't have any pioneers nearby. There you go, second team for the one going to flank here, shot five, Panther misses though, Panther misses, again we're turning about here, keeps the front armor there towards the enemy tank, very good, very good, shot bounced, another hit, they almost got it, and he gets the team hit four, but the Panther's in the center, bad spot, there you go, field gun setting up, and gets a penetrating hit there before it can wipe out the crew, Mets need two on the Panther, shoots up, but there's too many cons to go about, there you go, and the tank grenade goes off, another one, and the command Panther, which he just reached retreat to, Goes down in flames, and Birmingham, of course, can quickly replace his tank losses, but for Easter to do it, well, he actually went for a Panzer IV. So he's uh, actually slightly ahead in armor now, despite losing a Command Panther, Veteran G2. So there you go, Panzer Kampfwagen 4, rolling ahead. Backbone of the German Panzerwaffe for most of the war. Fun fact, the Panzer IV actually had a armoured sort of a stowage there for this protection for its ammunition, whereas the Panther did not. So that's a little fun detail there in differences between the two tanks. Now the T-34 line for Bernie, I can't know if they're pushing back the Panzer IV. Looks like it's going to just salvage the anti tank and getting more fuel for his own things, which is not a bad idea. And he's wrecking the other one because he's probably not anticipating he can salvage both of these, so rather salvage one, get a bit of fuel that, and then deny the other into tank unto his opponent. Oof, almost got the kid with the crew there wiped out. So Isidore's managed to turn things around a bit. He's still in a pretty dicey situation here versus Burmy and the 125th Rifle Edition, but he's not quite as a poorly off as he was when he lost that uh, car on there to the forward headquarters. And there's still, of course, a lot of booby traps around, so I mean, those could still give uh, Bernie something to work with there. Panzer Ford advancing on the T-54 and 6 lands a good hit. Another hit, they shot bounce though, and another incendiary bounce again, roughly around the centre there of each of those defences. Panzer Ford gets off a good hit on the T-54, fire lights up again there, forcing back each of those troops. 78 points left here, Northern Victory Point being secured again there by Burmese forces. The Burmese beginning to bleed out here. Partly again just the heavy insistence in front of the assaults. And also just not enough tanks and overall not enough flanking. Or at least just some smoke you know, screens from mortars. Those results I think do a lot there for you know Burmese you know, when it comes to attacking easily. So whatever he could have done you know, to mitigate losses, he's not really been doing that. Which does give Isidore you know, maximum opportunity to sort of get back there because you know he gets more favorable trades. So as long as he doesn't you know, beat our victory points, he can maybe slowly but surely turn things around there. So a revision there of Burmese tactics for him would be a pretty good idea there. Stum Pioneer like gaining veterans you four. That's really good. The opposite line though continues to be unupgraded. No Stum Gewehrs, no Maschinen Gewehr. Now the T-34 for Burmy. Up north, counterattack here with almost a done spearheading the effort. Folks can be supporting. And the spear planted court binding by their cabin fire can as well there for the brave Lancer at the front. And there you go, MG-34 moving up halfway to Veteran 3. Panther Paul, they're hanging back. 
Might want to get something up to here with the T-34 because that could also wipe out the MD-34 with its machine guns. And there you go, we can see that easily just retreats. Rather than lose his veteran machine gun crew, very good idea. Still, not a lot of action going on in the south here. Could still, you know, benefit with the single Sturm Pioneer Squad with the Mindfuck team. Just sweeping everything up there. Second team for rank for Burmy. The 125th Rifle Division, the Motherland. And they're engaging those filthy fascists as they try to secure these secret victory points. Got the Panther for the Ramen here, takes up on the ridge and engages the T-34. Bounces though, and we got a Yak Panther from Isildur. No second Panther IV, but a Yak Panther, a tank destroyer. Interesting. Engaging engineers out in the open, Panther IV heading southwards. Yes, Need to be careful not to extend it too far. There you go, the Ken was running up, and then the 19th T-55 getting off an ambush bonus. Another hit, they almost got the T-54, almost got it! Oh, T-54 escapes though. The Wrath of Deutschland. Up north, there we got pressure there from Burmese to try to watch more art maneuver. He used to do it, but he's uh, dug in here. Still no machine guns on those orbs on any upgrades, really. So Burmese quick to call in send a bash there to flash out the Germans from the house and light the house on fire. T-4-4 there, outmaneuvering the end. Or Kednev, another T-4 moving in, that's going to clear it out. We got the Panther 4 moving up, getting a good hit, then the T-34. Yak Panther mobilized here for Isidore, finally arriving at the front line. And he's going to ram the Panther 4! Again, Burmy not afraid to ram things, and also go for another T-34 now, but on the other hand, he's really beginning to bleed out of things. He's down two infantry squads. In that regard, Burmy's tactics do hold one particular flaw, which is unit preservation. And again, he tends to just take head on, meaning he tends to go for the most expensive option he can. Without really trying to mitigate any losses he might suffer. Yak Panzer of the Lands a good hit in the T-34 with its high velocity 75mm gun, same as on the Panther, which could penetrate most, if not all, tanks from the Allies. Obstacles occur in the northern point, Vetri 2 there. More booba traps here from Burmy. Panzer Force going to need some repairs there from the Sturm Pioneer. And Panzer there being absolutely riddled with holes. He's not finally booba trapped the victory point. He's booba trapped the central one. He still hasn't done anything there. Then again, he still has been, you know, not really doing much there either. And huh, booba trap does not go off. Uh, as soon as there we go, wipes the entire force of the squad again. Oh, I think it was because that one was still basically contesting the point. It doesn't go off unless it's attack being taken. So as soon as he left there, it basically went off, wiping his entire infantry unit like that. So again, booba trap, really good. Again, I describe them as just demo charges you don't actually have to pay attention to, which is pretty good. And pretty dirty. Got the Panther running northwards here. Russians rushing for the victory point. We have to do this, otherwise we will lose in this sector. And we won't get our vodka. But won't we be dead? That's even worse. Constantly getting absolutely obliterated for the Panzer IV. On their own, they are rather weak there. And the tank unit will not be able to stop this allegation of Kruppstahl and German engineering. In this center, we got the T-34 going for the Yacht Panzer, which is trying to stay a good distance there. Using the terrain as much as possible. T-34 desperately trying to flank. It's not quite going to work out there. And there we go, gets the T-34. The Yacht Panzer takes out a tank. And now Burmese just down to an infantry squad like Kednev and a T-34. He has barely anything left, whereas Isla's got plenty of minutes. He's barely got any victory points left. But beyond that, though, his forces, on the hand, are much more considerable and uh, much better equipped. And there you go, taking to the center of Panther 4 Infantry, Yak Panzer, T-54 rolls ahead. Kedmer for wiped up, comes about to get annihilated, and there you go. Panther 4, Yak Panzer, gauge that Panther fast off as well. T-54 about to go down. 
Panzer four misses. Jack Panzer moves ahead, and there you go. Burmy leaves the fight. A victory here for Germany. A loss for the Soviet Union. A brutal battle here. Spearheaded by Burmese fort headquarters. Catching his door off guard. He could, I think, adapt to a bit of better, but he managed to pull through with it. Secure the rest of the part of the map again. So the slow move ahead. Burmy, I think, overall was too reliant just to take head on. Not a rough trying to do actually outmaneuver his opponent. Let's at least make use of smoke to then sort of medicate the incoming fire from when he attacked head on. Comparatively easy, though, he's just been able to sort of keep, you know, play around. Slowly, you know, make good trades. Didn't continue doing anything silly. He could have tried, you know, with more minds from the south. That way, bring up through here. And that way, you know, catch Burmy off guard. But I would say he's doing play pretty well here, considering everything. And he made a pretty good, you know, move of things. And Burmy, though, yeah, again, always played well. But again, his tactics, you know, approach was increasingly weakened. And just slowly wore him down at quite a cost, which easily was able to take advantage of. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe to the friends. Share it with everyone. If you'd like what to do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Links are in the video description. And of course, a big thanks to all of my current Patreon supporters, with which it, this episode certainly would not have been possible. So thank you all, and see you all tomorrow for another signing episode. Bye.